Okay, and we are good to go. We are good to go. Stephen Lynch, you're very welcome. Thank you very much, Sean. How are you getting on? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. I'm good. I just finished my exams yesterday, so... Oh, good man. Congratulations. Yeah. So. Some relief. Some relief, yeah. But it's hard to know. You get structure on your day, you know? I'm yeah. I'm all over the place today. I'm trying to figure out what to do, you know? I always find uh, the thing with exams is... Uh, you get a weight off your shoulders for about a half an hour and then you're worried then about the results. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's it. Ah, no, I won't be worrying about the results. I think I'll do well. I'll do grand. Confidence is always, my man. Yeah, well, I, I, it's continuous assessment, you know. It's, um, okay, so you have a lot of work 50%, done. You have a 50% going in already, so it's grand. Yeah, I should pass anyway. Great stuff, great stuff. Come here, it's great to get chatting to you. Um, I'm just starting up, I suppose, this experiment more than anything. Uh, it's kind of been on my mind for a while just to uh, kind of get a podcast going. And I suppose the whole function of it is to uh, just have a chat with different lads, past players, present players, future players, just to get an insight into different approaches from everybody, first of all. But I suppose the whole point of it would be to try and uh, promote our players a bit more, especially within Longford. And uh, I find even amongst the youth nowadays, just being a primary teacher myself, you could talk to pupils the day after a match or in school any day and a lot of them would surprise you and how little they know about Longford football and who represents Longford football so I think it'd be nice just to shut down the outside world for a while and just get especially in thing, with things the way they are at the minute you know no better opportunity to get just to get a bit of promotion in place and try and get people talking about our footballers again and building Longford up. Yeah, well, I, I certainly noticed in the three the three Longford teams that I did with Benny, Denise, and Seamus that, and and then everybody's kind of having this feeling now that we're realizing that social media is a good way to communicate with uh, the youth and with people and communicate about the game, and I think it's a new. Um, like we have to get with the, use the technology as well to get out to people that like that wasn't there in the past. You know what I mean? Like we didn't no. have Zoom and all these things to use. You know, so I think it's a great idea, and uh, I think I hope I wish you all the best. Thanks great so success much. with it, man. And no, no better place to start with yourself because uh, we've quite a bit to talk about. But um, yeah, no, it's interesting what you said there. Like it is, it is a good opportunity uh, to get what would you say, to get publicity out there. But like I was at the O'Byrne Cup final there recently this year and uh, I just went to support the lads. And it, it always amazes me, like when you're not kind of involved anymore, you kind of look around and, you know, you see, you know, you just kind of, you can kind of see the interest gone out of it a bit to an extent because you remember years ago, like as, as young young kids or self going to matches, like it was, it was what you just look forward to every weekend. And I think it's because every newspaper you pick up or every article you pick up on social media, it's inevitably about the top four county teams in Ireland, you could say. It's either about Dublin, it'll be about Mayo, it'll be about Tyrone, and whoever's next in line after that. Yeah, it, it seems that way, you know. Um, I think that... Yeah, yeah, it's just, we don't get a lot of coverage, you know, and not, not, I don't think get the coverage, like players are getting the coverage sometimes they deserve, you know, but, but then again, there's nobody doing it either, you know what I mean? So that's why what you're doing is a good, good idea, you know, to give some young lads, uh, you know, talk to them about it because like, do you, you, are you talking about dealing with the young players is it like like talking to some of the younger lads like some minors is it or 21s or yeah well ho hopefully down the line so we'll see how it goes but like i'd always be interested in kind of insights from you know back in the say this early 2000 teams there teams that you were involved in like these are teams that these teams are the reason i played football and i suppose i'd look forward just to getting an insight into how things worked back then what was their mentality at that time and mm. As a young player now, you know you kind of want to give them, you kind of want to give them a reason to keep going and pursue their county careers. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's tough. You know, yeah. it's, um, it's definitely there, you're going to be. It's going to be a good. You're going to get some interesting conversations with the young lads. Yeah. So, so like, you know, because and you'll be able to relate to them as well because you know they they. 
you know, as you, even at the moment, think about it now with COVID-19, but even if there was exams going on, leaving sir, and then you've got minor players and, you know, you're coming into the summer now, busy, there'd be, you know, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with the young lads and, you know, it'll be interesting to see their perspective. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? I can get them to hear their voice heard because it's a voice that doesn't really get heard. And then, as you said, like you can also tap into the more mature lads like myself and we can give you some of our experience as well. And hopefully the young lads might learn a bit from us too, you know? True, true. Because I think especially as a young lad, they can look down the line and say, do you know what? If I give this everything, there will be some form of appreciation at the end of it. You know, that you're not just going to be another number, say, that gives... 10, 12, 14, 15, whatever years to your county and then it's a pat on the back, good luck. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, it, is, you are, it is appreciated, you know, it is yeah. for sure. So yeah, exactly, you get them to know that, you know. Yeah, exactly. Cool, so again, thanks very much for Absolutely. taking the time out to have a chat and we'll, we'll get stuck into it. Now I was doing a bit of research on you. Right. <laughs> I suppose, I'm looking at your early years, I suppose, the thing that strikes me the most is you had so much going on from a young age. Oh, dude, you've no idea. So, <laughs> so to start off with, like, where did it, where did it kick off you? If we go back to, say, National, national School as a start point. Right, National School starting point would be Stone Park. Uh, Eamon Brennan, did you ever meet Eamon yeah, Brennan? Yeah, Stone no, Park. Right. No, Eamon, yeah, from, yeah. The Kerry, from Kerry. He's an absolute gentleman. So he would have been my third class teacher. Uh, obviously, kind of picked me out as a player, you know, and we got well trained there, you know what I mean? I was playing a little bit with Grattans as well in the football. Kevin Victory was coaching us there. And I had a lot of good coaches. Uh, then I had um, Billy McDermott there as well. Actually, Billy coached the soccer, from what okay. I can remember. He was the soccer man and, and a bit of the Gaelic. And then Kevin Victory was kind of helping him out. So that was my, they were my first kind of coaches in, 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 in primary school. Um, and then I, I moved from Grattans to Slashers. Uh, at under 14 level I was playing I played football with, with slashers uh, but but the soccer then like get, you're talking Gaelic football kind of took a back seat because a, a man called I, I I actually was playing soccer at the time for Tefia Harps did you ever hear of Tefia yeah, Harps? Yeah I did yeah 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 so I was playing with Joe Farrell I uh, was our, my coach with Tefia Harps very very good coach uh, very very good soccer coach and he was keep coaching me with Tefia uh, and up to about under 12s and then randomly one day I think I was playing in a, a basketball match I'm really sure down in the mall and any of the lads will tell you I was useless at basketball I just was not there was a very good basketball team at the time um, Falcons team or Longford team going on they were winning all Ireland be Eddie Sherd and William Murray all that Ian Chan and all those guys and I was just down there kind of messing around with the basketball but they, they could play I couldn't play basketball I was a rugby player you know what I mean I, I was brought up playing rugby that, that my whole grounding was in Longford Rugby Club but at under 12s I was just rugby all the way played a little bit of Gaelic with Grattans and then I was playing soccer with Tefia Harps but then randomly one day in the middle of a basketball game someone shouted onto the court that there was a, a bus going to Dublin to play a soccer game against some club in Dublin I don't know who they were uh, Alan O'Toole a Longford Asthma select you know <laughs> it's mad. it was mad yeah and uh, basically went up to the game and it was actually against Stella Maris and Stella Maris are Johnny Giles' team, you know, Stephen Carr. There'd be a lot of good class players went through Stella Maris, Glenn Crow. Um, you know what I mean? Oh. Like they, there was a there was it was a top it was a, a, a basically a, a football nursery in Dublin. It'd be, it'd be just it was top top club. But anyway, we went up to play them someday, I don't know why. Uh, and we had like overage players, underage players, we were an awful mix of players. <laughs> and uh I scored a hat-trick. I scored two with me left, one, one with me right. And the one with the right was actually, I'm left-footed, but the one with the right was actually the best one. I went in off the, went into the top right stanchion from the right-hand side, like 
from from the wrong side you know what i mean just smashed it as you did forget it so i got a hat trick yeah and then the the president of the club came up to me after and he ripped a piece off his his box of major his cigarette box and he just said and he wrote his number down he says give that to your father and i was like <laughs> i said and he said don't lose it i remember him saying don't lose it and i was <laughs> like so i took this little bit of the box cigarette box and put it in the arse pocket and i got back to dad and said dad, that some fella came up to me in dublin after the game and he said to ring him and Dad was a bit skeptical anyway because I was I was purebred rugby like I was yeah. a much better rugby player than soccer player like way better um, and uh, anyway your man rings dad and he's like I want that your young fella to come up and play for our under 14s and my dad's like why would he play under 14s and uh, he's only under 13. The man was like, no way, like, what? What are they feeding me down there? I was pretty physical, like, I was a big, big lad. Good and age, uh, yeah. so I, I signed for them anyway, went up under 13s, and we had an okay league. Uh, I was probably just, I was just kind of just playing pretty well, and we got to the Dublin Cup final. I was marking uh, Glenn Whelan, you know, the, the yeah. Irish player. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We were playing Maryland in the Dublin in the Dublin Cup final. Um and um I was marking Glenn. Yeah, he was centre half and I was center I was striker. And I was nil all after normal time and then I scored two goals in uh in in injury time in extra time. And uh it was um it's called the Liam Brady Cup, right? Yeah. So who was presenting the <laughs> the, the trophy was Liam Brady right and I got man the match because I lobbed a keeper from about 35 yards uh, from out in the left wing on the run I scored just outrageous outrageous lob and oh, I meant it. Yeah, some, yeah, it was. some memories to have yeah and then two weeks later I was in Arsenal god you know what I mean like and, and it all came from just that Al Notul uh, game and then what happened was the age changed, right? The age okay. of the football team changed where I went from being the big guy to being the small guy. Not small, but not being able to just throw, throw lads out of the way. Yeah. You know, I was, I was 18 days underage that year. The following year, I was about seven months underage and there was other lads who were 18 days underage. And at that age, it makes a difference. You oh, know, massive, like, yeah. Massive really difference, awesome. like... But anyway, I was the only player to go up from my under-13 team to my under-14 team. And then there was two under-14 teams with Stella, the under-14As and the under-14Bs. And they amalgamated the two teams of the under-14s. And then I was the only one that went up. And then we won the... We won... We, that under-14 year, we played uh, St. Mary's and Limerick in the quarterfinal of the, of the SFAI Cup. We played Leeds of Cork in the semi final of the SFAI Cup. And then we played um, Cherry Orchard in the final. Now, Cherry Orchard would have been Keith Fahey and Co. Okay. You know what I mean? And we beat them 4 1. So. Unreal. You know, and then like, there was, I was playing so soccer you, for Ireland and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it just you're, took off. You're what age? You're what age at this time? You're 14, 14 is it? 14. 14. Like, yeah, um, yeah. To, have, to have that experience. Uh, it was a bit crazy, yeah. To have all was, that going on, yeah. Like, it was very crazy. And then, obviously, then the, the soccer, or the Gaelic always took a bit of a back seat after that, except with Mel's, you know what I mean? In Mel's, I played Gaelic because I didn't. Were, were you in Mel's from first year? Yeah, 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 I was in Mel's the whole way through. So I was playing Gaelic and rugby with Mel's and then um, playing soccer at the weekends in, in Dublin. I suppose when you think back to Mel's that time, you were playing, you were playing football, really. Football was always the priority, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah was, I, was, uh, but, was, but, was, Steve Coy, was Steve Coy doing the coaching that time? I'll tell you. I'll tell you one now. Um, I was actually, I played rugby in junior cup rugby i played with mel's oh, i loved it it was brilliant we got to the junior cup final we lost i was actually injured for the final i got injured against home farm in a soccer match 
uh, I, I jumped up with the goalkeeper, went 50-50 with him, and his knee fucking caught me straight in the hip bone, the hip flexor, but right oh. on the bone. And uh, I went to West Ham the following week, and I had to pull out of the match in West Ham. And then the following Wednesday was the the Junior Cup final in the rugby, and I couldn't play that either. I was out for about six weeks with it. Oh, it was killer. Man. Disaster. Crucial yeah. time, too. And then, yeah, as you said, then I wasn't really allowed to play rugby in senior rugby. Mel, was, you had to play football. The football, yeah. You see, I'm sure is... I could have. I know there, it wasn't really a thing that you, you played both. You know what I mean? I yeah. think the, the senior football in Mel's is, is, is enough. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you couldn't really play both, even though I would have liked to play both and done less training. You know, well, you see, this is the I suppose this is why it's difficult, and especially nowadays. Like, I see with kids, they're, they're playing so much. Like, there's they're they could be playing a schoolboy match, for example, one evening, then they're shooting off to a soccer match an hour later, and they're probably training with the local soccer team on the Astro after that. You know, like, there's so much going on, and just even listen to your story there now of like. You were four, you had fourteen. You were at fourteen years of age. You had so much going on, and then mm. it comes to a point, kind of, where you kind of have to make a decision, don't you? Yeah, it's a, but sometimes the decisions kind of get made for you as well, you know. Because then it came to a point at under fifteen. So I was still on the Irish team at under fifteen. Stella were still going strong. I think we got to the SFAI quarter final. We we either won the league or came second in the DDSL league that year as well. We were, we had a, still had a bloody good team under 15s, and at the end of that season, then I was kind of being offered contracts. You know what I mean in yeah. England. So I had like Coventry City uh, offered. We're looking Tranmere Rovers. Uh, who else? Um, Oh, let me think. Manchester City was probably the biggest one. They were the most keen at, at the time because they signed Paddy McCarthy and Dale Joyce off my team as well. Both went to Man City. So Man City, when Paddy and Dale flew over with their families to sign, I actually flew over with them, uh, played a game, scored five goals in one game in oh, Man no. City, for, for Man City. Like, I think against Norwich, uh, scored five goals. Now, it was one of those games where, you know, the ball just hits your arse and goes in, you know what I mean? Uh, like, it wasn't that I, I didn't them. score five. Out, I didn't actually score five outrageous goals. As far as I remember, they were all poachers and tap-ins, but should they all count, you know? You score five, that's all you have to say. five in one game, yeah. And then after the game, Paddy and Dale were both in signing. Yeah. They were given all the gear and they were given a pair of boots and a jersey. And I got all the gear except for the pair of the boots and the jersey. And they said to me, uh, are you going to sign? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I haven't decided yet. You know, I'm not sure. I wasn't really sure. So you, you were just let go over with these guys, were you? Oh, yeah. I used to, my routine was finish school on Friday, yeah. uh, wake up Saturday, go to Dublin, play a soccer match for Stella Maris on Saturday get on the airplane uh, after the game directly, go directly from um, the, the Stella match to the airport, hop on the plane, land somewhere in England, wake up the next day, go play a game for whoever, Everton or West Ham or whoever it was, get back on the bus, back on the plane and back in school for Monday morning. So these were, you were inevitably going over, you were going over these, tri- these were trial games put in place. Each yeah, you'd be going yeah. over there and you'd be, you'd be playing again. Yeah, you'd be doing trial games and then at the, at the holidays, then you'd be brought over for trainings and all that kind of stuff. So Easter, you'd go over um, and train for a week or whatever with, with whoever. With, with so like that, that's it's such a massive thing. Like at that age, you're getting these invitations to your house and like, for you, yeah, but they would, for go, you, they would all go to Tom. They'd all go to that fella that. Um, yeah, but, but we had some team like our Stella Maris team was was beautiful team to watch. Like we had a we I think seven of the team went over. Like about seven players went over to England, and you know eight or nine could have gone, and we really had a nice team. Like I have to say. Um, so he he gets these letters. You get these invites. 
so I just I, obviously them. yeah your parents have to be contacted then so yeah they contact for, my parents yeah. and dad is like okay you're going to west ham this week you're going following week you're going there and this yeah it's kind of it was you get used to it like it was fun it was enjoyable to be honest big, big decision to make at that day that age too because yeah you know, that was that was a weird one when tom the guy from stella maris came down to the house and he said all right uh, Lyncher, we need a decision because all these clubs they, they want to know like you're 15 years old so basically the option was to go over there for four years two year YTS two year pro um, that was the best option from Man City okay and he just said do you want to go or not I can't keep sending you over on trials you know it all costs money and everything and you were I was uh, hey, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I was. I was. I was. I enjoyed it. I I did enjoy it. it was It was good. It was a good buzz. Um, but I can but, imagine. I can imagine that being a very scary decision at the same time. No, it wasn't. I, it was a very weird decision because it, we were. You're weighing up all the pros and cons. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, I could be a, a play in front of sixty thousand people and be a millionaire, or mm. I could break my leg in the first year and that could be the end of it. You yeah. know what I mean? And I have no education and I'd be out of school and junior cert and. The way we looked at it was, if you're good enough now, so what's the difference when you're 18, 19, yeah. 20? Like, well, you're no, you're only a gossip. Like, I was like going from like living in Fair Fad and Longford or in young years in Granard, like you're going from a tiny little village and maybe being plonked in the middle of London or the middle of Manchester. And like, they're big places. Like, and you realize that when you go over there. But I, if you want to know why I think I didn't say yes to the, I'd say in my subconscious, it was uh, something that happened uh, for the Irish team that year. Okay. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, uh, I was, we were going to play. So I had played against Wales. I had played against Finland. I had played a whole load of games for the, the Irish team. I was playing left back actually. Under, uh, under fifteen, was it? Under fifteen, yeah. And then we got to, we had this game. It was on um, Sky Sports. It was against England on Sky Sports live. Jermaine Pennant actually was coming on the scene. He was their right winger, and I had played every minute of every game before that game, right? Mm. And um, I was sure I was going to be marking this Jermaine Pennant guy. And I was ready for it, like, and I was all mentally ready to go. And, and I was just, I had played, honestly, I played every single minute. But basically, the, before the game, you, you have a training session where you go over all your set pieces, you know? Yeah. You go over your corners, free kicks, all that stuff. And um, we were going to do the set pieces. And I was always on the front post for a right footed for their corner from the right side i always was at the front near post and during the training session another guy was there that had been injured for a couple of months and he was in and i was out standing on the edge of the box and i remember he headed the ball out from the first corner and i knew what had happened and i hit the thing with a right foot volley man bang and i smashed it into the back of the net i'll never forget <laughs> it I was raging and I went upstairs. Uh, I, was, I was actually sharing a room with Keith Fahey, funnily enough. And I just went onto the bed and just cried. And I never got a minute. And I had told everybody about this game on Sky Sports. Like everybody was going to watch it. Uh, like all my family knew. You know, it was just, it was actually yeah. embarrassing. You know what I mean? That, I was just mortified that I told everybody about this game and then I didn't even get a minute. And it just made me see the dirty side of sport that, yeah. you know, they, a lot of managers and things, they don't give, they don't care about you, really. No. They just care, about, you know, and then like the way it was done was so bad. It was just, it was just a real eye opener for me. And then I just kind of lost trust and, and lost kind of just kind of went, you know what, now I just play for, you know, I don't, don't think I need that. And even when I was over in England and I used to go on the trials, you know, um, like I was, I was good. I, I was a pretty tidy player. I was very clever, like very, um, like I could just do something outrageous, you know, randomly. But I, yeah. I always sensed that the English lads over there as well, like sometimes they, 
they wouldn't talk to you. You know, it's always weird, weird Tricky, feeling. Yeah, so. And always this weird feeling of competitiveness in the dressing room. And like these lads were all playing like for Man City. So you go into a dressing room of Man City players and it's like they're all individuals. It's like they're all trying to get this contract. Everybody's trying and like, you know, it was weird. I just got a bad feeling off the whole and did thing. Anybody, did anybody approach you then after that? Did anybody like say, pull you aside to have no. a chat, explain? No, no just not brutus. at all. Brutus. No, they, do you know what they did? I played the ne- very next game against Scotland uh, in the hole, in, in, number, in number 10 slot. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I went over my ankle in the first half and I played as long as I could. But I actually played the very next game. So I basically played all the games before that. The one game on TV, I was dropped. And then I was back in again. I was like, ah, I, it, just, it just made me just very... It was, a, it was a, an, an interesting lesson to get. A yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough... Um, and and going over to England. Going over to England is not the fairy tale everybody makes it out to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're going over there. You can see these kids are like 14 years old, 15 years old, but it's all May Fane. Like it's all everybody out for themselves. There's, there's not much teamwork. No. It's, it's a business. And it's, and not unf- like for, it's not like for Colo where someone hits you a clout. You know, they're playing for Longford. If someone flattens you, you know, you're going to some, or Mel's, you know, like you, they, they have your back. Your boys will have your back. But over there, not a hope. It's, 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 a, it's a business. Yeah, you, kind of, you, need, you need that ruthless edge about you. And it's, it's funny because you could well, have... You need to want to do it. You need to yeah, really to because be down the line, these the players, player. this was, you know, they're seeking I contracts. didn't want to. I was a rugby player. Yeah. If it was rugby, it might have been different, Buzz. But I think rugby is different anyway. It's just a different etiquette, you know, I think. Well, yeah, so probably definitely more well, not always, different. actually. But, but anyway, yeah. No, I just, just that's yeah, the way. That, that was, uh, yeah, it wasn't a nice experience, huh? Yeah, but the objective was, yeah, but then I decided to focus on education yeah. because I was staying, you know what I mean? I decided, right, the reason you're staying is for the education and you have up there that I got the sports scholarship in 99. Yeah, yeah so I got the, the scholarship to UCD and that was, a, that was a dream, you know what I mean? Like that was, that's what it was all about anyway. So that was more fun, you know? Yeah, and that was that was I suppose that was uh, it was great comfort in that, like you know that it was it was all kind of worthwhile that you had something like this then to fall back on, you know, because it wasn't just a case of putting so much energy and time into traveling over for this, and like that that experience in a way. I suppose you were like for your age without realizing it at that time, another lad might have been swallowed up by that occasion, whereas you. Took it on, you took it on your shoulder and said, right, look, I'm just going to enjoy this now. And yeah, but there was a lot of good stuff. We were playing serious football with Mel's. So at 16, 17, Ireland breaking into the Mel's senior team, there was, Granard was keeping you busy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Longford, I ended, you see, you got player of the tournament there in the Ian Rush tournament in Wales. Yeah, that was in 98. And right after that, Longford Town called me and brought me in to play with their under 21s. I was only 17. And we got to the Leinster, Leinster final in some, some competition against Pats. Um, and we lost that. But then um, Stephen Kenny brought me into the Longford team. And I was on the, just before I got left to UCD, I was actually on the bench and got a run in the first round of the UEFA Cup. Brilliant. In the qualifiers, you know what I mean? So like things just take their own path, you know, like you, I chose, I chose one direction, but I'm not no regrets at all. You know, you still got to play for UCD, you got to play for Longford Town, got to play the compromise rules as well. You know, yeah, so. that's what I say. So you you come, uh, you're moving on to Mel's now, and you're starting to play senior football for Mel's. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, who, that was brilliant. That was that was that that was an education. I think I was starting in first year. Was I first year in Mel's? Would you have been? Um, I'm trying to think back now. What year was that? What year were you in fifth year? We played Pats in the Leinster final two years in a row. We lost to both of them. Okay, uh, yeah. I was, I was, that rings any bells. Yeah, it does. The school went because I don't know why your name and Willie Murray, were you the two guys that were going for the international rules that time? Yes, yes. Me yes. and Willie Murray. Yeah, yeah. So was Declan Rowley trying to need that time? 
in Mouse. Declan was our coach, yeah. He was full on, hands on coach. And I think time. it was Enda Williams, was he, he was he starting on the senior team? Was he in first year or second year at that time? He wouldn't have been on it. No, Enda was behind us, maybe a year or two behind. He would have been the next the next um So did, did he, he he didn't play with you and I those senior teams, did I he? I don't think he was on our senior team. No. no I taught him one um Pats and Avon final, I'm trying to think back. Because I always remember he was uh when he first arrived in Longford, he was playing. He was playing with the senior team, but he was only in second year mm. I think at the time. So he was quite young. So um, the international rules then, how did that come about? Yeah, well, that suited me down to the ground because I um, I love rugby. So it's like a nice combination. Tackle, yeah, I just took to it like a duck to water. But I had another flipping experience with that as well. So I was kind of. I was flying in all the trainings. I was doing well and everything. And I, I'm pretty sure I would have been starting in the first test against Australia. But I got this killer flu. And I, could, I missed the very first test. And there was a big fight in it and everything. And I missed, I missed all the crack. <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge fight. Like, cause I, and, then, and then I was watching it on TV. But it was actually on TV on one of these Gaelic football programs the following week. And it was like uh, goal of the week. And then it was like point of the week. And then it was like diplomatic decision of the week. And you just see the whole, the two teams like beating the crap out of each other. Uh, but we lost heavily in that test, actually. We, we lost by about 20 or 30 points against Australia. Then the net, that was down in Limerick. And then the second test was in Parnell Park. And we kicked the crap out of them. And I was back for that. I was playing, I played on the 40. I was playing. Um, Played, played 11. Uh, it was good. Yeah, it was really good. It suited were you, me. Were you 17 at this point? Yeah, 17, under 17. Uh, and me and David Hines made the team as well. From, That's uh, right. Yeah, David was yeah. about to, yeah. William Murray was actually the following year. And I think he went to Australia. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he went to Australia, yeah. Did you ever see Willie play? You did. I did. I was actually on a county squad with Willie. I think it was back in 2006, around that time. Right, I right, think. right. Yeah. I think going back. Yeah, it's a, a long time ago, but he was going trapped on them. But no, I just yeah. remember, you know, you're thinking back there when you're obviously a young lad and you're trying to break through and all that. You always remember these names ahead of you, like, and mm. what certain lads were achieving. Like, and I suppose you were 17 at this point, And, like, when you stop for a minute and you think about the experience you already had, and like obviously you were playing with Granard in the midst of all this as well, I imagine. Yeah, I played a minor final for Granard. Um, did you play Northern Gales? Yeah, play Northern no, Gales we played Northern, Northern Gales. Yes, yes. we did. I, before, I actually, before. in a mad way, I remember that game. I think I was going to support my cousins actually. Oh, dude, we were not. Uh, I, 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 actually, know what? I wouldn't even say robbed. I would just say, oh, Mark Birmingham. Oh. We we hopped yeah. at that time, right? I was I was six, sixteen. I was playing midfield with Dermot O'Rourke. Ah, uh, oh, oh, dude, I was having a flyer in that game, and then just two long balls in with about five minutes to go. He just caught them. They just caught, came in perfect and back of the net. Yeah, we lost by a point or two, I think. But, uh, See, you were so you were probably kind of an unusual type of player because in Longford, I suppose we always kind of uh, over the years, you know, we, we probably. We've lacked size and stature, I suppose, when we come up against other counties. And I always, I suppose, you, I always remember you, of you was like you were always a very athletic build from a young age. Yeah, yeah, I was. I had my legs were, yeah, blessed. Yeah, quite. Yeah, definitely had advantages in that department. Just physicality, you know, the, yeah. just my legs. I think. It, so my dad was a rugby player, you know, and he was like a a prop and that could have played kind of flanker you know what i mean yeah. like a very dynamic prop basically so you know i got his his legs and his calves and yeah i i basically yeah i i, I was quite blessed and, and i you know i had a very very bad accident as well when i was uh seven six or seven i got what an tractor accident what happens i was playing uh army or whatever i don't know with the lads on the street and we used to ch chase tractors and trucks down the streets so <laughs> hide, hide in the ditch right and then when they would drive by we would go running after them and try to jump on the back of them 
And <laughs> one, one day there was a tractor flying down the road and uh, I ran after it and I was pretty damn quick. And I caught it and I jumped on the back into the transport box and then I turned around to the lads to kind of celebrate. <laughs> the tractor hit a rock and I fell on the back wheel oh, on the, and went head first between the wheel and the mud guard. My God. Yeah, and I dislocated my right, my right hip. Like pulled my whole leg out of the socket, almost lost the leg. Oh God. You know, that was when I was seven or eight, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, pretty lo- I'm pretty lucky to be able to get to the levels, you know what I mean? Teach you extremely well to recover from that. Which I, mute was on I was only side. young, you know what yeah. I mean? You're only six or seven, so... But, I, you know, you'd still wonder what the effects of it are. Like, it was pretty pretty horrendous, like... <laughs> you were probably cursing your glasses <laughs> you know, you know, the worst, you know, the you worst thing about it. The worst thing about it was I... Uh, I got slung about 20 yards out of the tractor, just chucked me out, like spat me out. Uh, still had the leg, was kind of hanging on. But I landed in a bed of nettles. Oh, dude. Lovely. And my, my whole chest and chin and everything were all just cut to pieces from the, from the tire, the back tire of the tractor. And, my whole, and I was just lying there in a bed of nettles with getting stung to bits on me. And and the leg was just sticking at right angle, like out. Oh, it's mad. God, so, Stephen. Yeah. So, nice. yeah. But but then you know I was young and and just the body just healed up pretty well. And then away. All oh, the things we do when we're young. Oh man, yeah. Stupid. Complete idiot. That's what that's where your that's where your speed and, and athleticism was a hindrance to you. You wouldn't have been able to catch the tractor. I know. Yeah, but I always wonder how fast. <laughs> I never you were done trying after that I'm still pretty quick like so, <laughs> so jumping know. forward jumping forward again you're um, okay you're after completing your compromise rules experience I suppose the talk then is whispering around you're going to get a call up to the county Lynchy um, no and I wasn't even allowed to play so Granard got to a county final uh, 2001 and I had just signed for um UCD and did the same time I was actually on the bench for the semi-final cool. and, and then I had signed for UCD professional contract with UCD semi-pro contract uh, wasn't allowed to play to be even be on the bench for the final so I actually missed the final of the, the county final um, against what, Drumlish yeah what year was that county final again Ooh, it must be 2001 I 2001, imagine or okay. 2000 or I don't know yeah um, so I missed that and um yeah, no, there was no no county, no, I wasn't playing any Gaelic football. Like I was I was um straight into soccer with UCD. Soccer, yeah. And then I I got a terrible injury then with UCD. I think I was doing I do you know why I think I got injured? Because I was doing they put us on the weights program. You know, this would have been back in 2000, 2000 20 years ago. Now things have changed a lot in yeah. training. You know what I mean? Like things Just with like, UCD now. Training right? nowadays is nothing like the stuff we were doing back 20 years ago. And I, I was put on a weights program. didn't suit me at all. And I ended up getting um, osteitis pubis. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? The pubic bone uh, and the, on the groin. And uh, after a year of the, the scholarship, I was let go from UCD because I, I basically missed the last three months of the season. I couldn't kick the ball 10 yards. Um, and they let me go. So that was the end of the soccer then for, I, I just, I didn't care. Like I, I went off to America, I think for a summer. Uh, and traveling, yeah. Just working. I just went to America just to work and then came back and played a bit of football for Granard and we won the intermediate. We won an intermediate back in 2001, 2002, I think. Okay. And, um, then I went playing rugby for UCD. So I was playing rugby for UCD 20s then. So I, I just completely quit soccer and then I went back to play rugby. When the groin, I was kind of feeling out the groin, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, it was, still wasn't 100%, but I was playing out half. I was playing rugby for, for UCD 20B team because their A team was just all internationals and scholarship players. So I was kind of playing for the UCD 20Bs. 
And then in the middle of that season, Joe Mulvihill uh, from Cashel, he rang me and he asked me to play for the County Under 21s. 21s, yeah. Did you train yeah. in Cully Fad, did you? Yeah, we did, uh, yeah. Weights I'll tell and you, all. they were training, they won't be doing that anymore. Weights and all on the ground, yeah. Oh man, that pitch. But you know what? Like I look back now and I was thinking about this this I, I had a feeling this week this all <laughs> this stuff would come up in this conversation. And I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, I know it was 20 years ago, whatever, and there was a lot of old school training going on. Yeah. You know, in Mel's, I remember Declan Rowley was tough. And I mean tough. It was discipline. Mel's was some of the hardest training I ever did in my life. I just always think of running when or think of medals. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you go. But where did we get? Yeah. We got to the extra final. Consistently, yeah. Where did we get? We got yeah. to the final. When, when, when Joe was training us with, with Longford, yeah. where did we get? Yeah. Leinster final. Who beat us? Dublin, like, uh, Dublin beat us in the Leinster, fi- Leinster under 21 final. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that team was the the foundation of a good team is spirit. You know what I mean, and and I think sometimes I think those old school training days in the dirt in Cully Fad are are what get you there. You know what I mean, and I I, I strongly and I like we didn't. I think everything. It wasn't all, everyone, everyone, it wasn't all yeah. in Cully Fad, you know. But yeah, the, I know. Yeah. A lot of the hard work was. I think you when you when you reflect back, like, and obviously it's easy when when you have success or when, you know, when things go well, you do look back and go, yeah, it was worth it. And then if things don't go so well, you can kind of look back on those things and curse it. But they all, they all play their part. And I definitely agree with you. I think that you create a bond once everyone's doing it together, you know, once a group is there and everyone's committed to this, doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. Like oh, I think yeah. it definitely, when it comes to You can to get crunch, the mix right. Yeah. When it comes to crunch point in games and, you know, throughout the season, they oh are, yeah, they are the they're the moments that kind of make or break. Now, team. saying that, if I was going into coach a team now in Mel's or a coach a county under twenty one team, I'd say if I brought them out to Cully Fad now and started running them around the freaking field of Cully Fad, I, I wouldn't be too long in the job, you know? Like, <laughs> like I know, you know what I mean? Like, I know, yeah. But at the same time, I do. I'm a big fan of going to an assault course, going somewhere tough, going getting your, your mind tested, like those army training. To, I think they're, you know, weekends away as a team, like, and, and doing tough stuff. And that, I think those, they're great, you know. I, I would definitely, if I had a team now, I would be definitely trying to get at least one killer weekend away where it's a mental tester and a physical tester. Yeah. And I mightn't even see a ball for the whole weekend, you know, like that kind of way. Um, <laughs> well, you might no, not. I would, I would not definitely long be doing that. Uh, oh, no I would know. Football is for the pitch. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you have to. <laughs> I don't know. I I would be a big fan of of testing people's mental, physical durability. If I was a manager, I'd be looking to see who are my leaders, who are the guys who are complaining who if i heard one complaint from a lad like he is gonna have to get a grilling like you know yeah. whinging whining cr- crying you know and, and to be honest at the end sometimes in my career i have been the whinger as well you know like when, oh, well, when we're yeah, traveling yeah. back from dublin or whatever you know to, to play for granard and you know it's a wednesday yeah. evening and you're absolutely knackered and you've just finished work and you have to drive back the whole way to granard and through the traffic do two hours train and drive the whole way back. And by the time you get home, it's one o'clock mm. in the evening and at night or 12 o'clock at night. And, you know, I, I have been the complainer, but you can't, you can't be. Yeah. You shouldn't be playing if you're complaining. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But I suppose you know, like, it's, if, uh, gonna, if it's, if it's that big a drag on you, don't bother. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, but, but I, I do think that, hard work if anyone said oh how did you get to play all those things like how did you achieve all those things it was by listening to like Declan Rowley Roger Martin they said jump I said how high Joe Mulvihill like Joe I was vice captain of Mel senior team vice captain of the county under 21 team you know what I mean like 
they, mm. they, you know, that's we you need, and and they didn't. Joe said run twenty laps of Cully Fad. We were like, I was like, right lads, let's go twenty laps Cully Fad. Joe says that. Joe, that's how we're gonna get there. Yeah, you know what I mean, and and I think. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mollycoddle lads. I I still think there's a degree of how you ha- it's it's not supposed to be easy, unfortunately, no. at the top. No. At the top, you know, at the very, very, very top, there's grind, there's unseen hours, there's things going on behind the scenes that, when the fans get to the field, they see the player and hopefully playing well, but they have no idea the hours in the gym, the mental stress you're going through as a youngster trying to deal with these big occasions you know what i mean like yeah you want to play dublin in a county in a leinster under 21 final to me was a big deal like you know what i mean i was nervous thinking about it you know um yeah tough they were great games that we had a great game against mead in the semi-final as well great but, memories uh, look back on but great crack yeah that's yeah. it that's what i'm realizing i think everybody's realizing it now with this covid that do you know what? When you take something away, all of a sudden you see the value in it. You know what I mean? When when someone says you can't play a game of football or you, I, I'm not allowed to go to Croker now to watch a game or go to Pierce Park to watch a game this for the foreseeable, like you're just like, geez, I'd love to go to Pierce Park now. It's a lovely sunny day and watch the boys. The boys have a good team now, you know. And you Yeah, know. That's, that's what you'd hope. Well, we don't know yeah. what the situation is going to be, but... I think it um, it will it'll definitely uh, generate a buzz again at the end because people will just be mad. It just just makes people appreciate you know what you had and you know some like go and see a game, be it any age group, any day, any grade, like it means an awful lot to people. It's such a huge part of their life, you know, the weekend heading to a match. Yeah. And now when that's taken away from me, as you said, you, you realise what you miss, you know. But, um, yeah, and when you're in the middle of it, you don't realise what you have. No, absolutely not. Yeah, but but, but then it, at the same time they were great days. Those that county under twenty one team was probably oh, like I played on a lot of teams, like an awful lot of teams. Like that was up there for the crack. You know what I mean? Like the, I even getting the bus home. I suppose I was in college as well. You know, I was in university. I think I was in my finals, and I was was in my final year. No, I was in the year before my final year in college. So I was in second year in college. I was still been able to go out and party. So I was yeah. probably hitting, I was probably hitting, um, not Dicey's at the time, what was it called? Temple Theatre or one of those places <laughs> on a Tuesday night, you know what I mean? And then heading out to Cully Fad on the bus on the Wednesday, <laughs> Trevor Clendenning on the other side of the, on the other side of the bus looking at each other going, oh Jesus, is he going to run us tonight or watch or what else could he All do? All the thoughts of that. You know, I know what I mean? But they were good, you know, when you're young. And like, it's a young man's game, I think. I think when you're in your 20s is your best time. Your early 20s, when you don't have usually the same commitments as, you know, work and life. And, you know, your college years, I, 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 would, I would encourage young lads to try to break in early. Get into the team. Try to get, you know, get star on the 21s and then you'll be automatic for the seniors. You know what I mean? If you're a top... Top five players for the county twenty one should be brought in every year. You know what I mean, and and I think you have about two or three years there where you're just a peak. Yeah. You're just at this peak age where you're just flying. I wouldn't, you know, I'd even I'd even suggest to like Podgy Davis and those to be bringing in minors and bringing in not minors but just lads out of minor even off to twenties. We like. If you look at any of the good teams now, they're all young lads coming in. You know, you have to start them. You know, look at Cristiano Ronaldo for United. Sure, he was thrown in there. Ryan Giggs, seventeen, bang, yeah, straight so in. The, 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 inter- the integration can be difficult because I suppose you have, um, you know, you have minors kind of protecting minors, looking after minors now. They, and they, you know, they can only play up to a certain age. And then mm-hmm. I suppose the twenties competition now is big enough competition as well. So there's a lot of focus on that. You know, so it kind of makes integration difficult because you could have, I think this year there was um, county senior matches and county under 20 games to one day, you know, and it's just... Oh, yeah, well, I wouldn't mind that, but as soon as the county under 20s competition is over, it's usually over before, yeah. I wouldn't have them in the league, but I would definitely be trying, I'd be keeping a very close eye on that county under 20s championship. And you see, that's, be- that's why it's difficult. That's the difference, you see, because, like, a county... Dennis Conanton... Dennis Conklin brought us in, brought me and Mickey Kelly in 
immediately after the under 21 Leinster final. And that, what year was that? 2000 and... 2001, 2002, maybe 2002, the first year. But I, I didn't get a game. Like, I didn't get start. I didn't, we played against Kildare. Remember, I think Nyler got an outrageous goal in, in Cusick Park. We played Kildare. And, or Trevor, no, I think it was Nyler who got an unbelievable goal. It's probably um, all those games. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was on the bench. Me and Mickey Kelly were on the bench. He, like, in fairness to Dennis Conte, he brought us directly in at 21 on the bench and then the following um the following season i did the pre-season and then okay. we played the Auburn cup and then i got as we're looking at the picture there against Kerry, i got the nod against Kerry to start so you know yeah you want to be looking to get in at 2021 i think like that's so talk, you, talk to me when you're you're called into the county dennis ranger yeah, that was just straight after the under twenty one. So you were were you twenty one? You were. I was twenty twenty one. Yeah. Twenty one. So what was your what was your thinking? You had to get in the call off. We all. Were... Um, nervous a little bit, but I I thought it was good. I'd always be a bit arrogant, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So you had, you I, had I, I wouldn't have been worried about you wouldn't have had to worry about me thinking oh nervous that I wasn't good enough. Uh, okay. So or yeah. the nervous going in talking to a lot of you had a lot of legends on the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had, so what was, that, remember, what was that long for dressing room like? Well, I, I'll tell you something now. I'll tell you one thing. Um, was I remember the first training session, slashers, in slashers on the top pitch. And I walked over and there was a big group. And the whole team was there. And Niall Sheridan, first straight over, bang, hand out, welcome. And I was like, all right, well, Niall has me back. I'm all right. That'll be Means grand. a lot, doesn't it? Oh, I'll never forget that. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a very nice moment. He ended up being my manager as well. So you know that's what right. I mean? Like, yeah. Pretty cool. Like you know, you're. you're I think that's that's so important though. Like you know, when you walk into a setup like that, and you don't realize it at the time because you're probably thinking you're nervous walking up to the group. What way are you going to be received? And then for someone, for some of the more senior players then to come over and just something simple as that, just to welcome you into the group, it just settles you straight away. Well, sure. I, I had heard of a lot of the players, but to be honest with you, I wouldn't have hardly, the first Longford game I was ever at was the Kildare game where I was on the bench. Yeah. Well, you had a lot going on though, I suppose, underage. Yeah, I, I played Longford under 16s, Longford 14s, 16s, minors. 21s but I had never been to a Longford senior to watch a Longford senior game like so I actually had never even seen probably Paul play or Podgy Davis like yeah. I actually hadn't seen any of them I hadn't even I hadn't seen any of the county finals or anything I didn't know anybody like you know <laughs> to me they were all just uh, names you know but I actually hadn't seen them play so you're probably an really advantage know. then going in yeah, I just didn't really know. Like, I just yeah. I heard names, but I didn't really know any of them. I just, um, yeah, I wouldn't have been a, 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 like, that's one thing I'll always say. Like, I'm not really from a Gaelic family. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really pulse through me veins like some lads, you know what I mean? Where, you know, it's everything, you know, to, to their family. And they go to all the Longford games and they go to all the club games and their family are heavily involved with the club. Like, my family aren't involved in Gaelic at all. In fact, my mum for a long time was like, why do you keep playing Gaelic football? Would you ever just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're always giving out about it. Like, and I'd be like, all right, you know, I, you know it's the crack, you know? I yeah. Like we'll see so many of your friends have been playing too. Ah, so yeah, sure. Listen. One thing I want to ask you here was, um, and it sticks out, is your long for career. Yeah. 2002 to 2005. Mm. Short. <laughs> Short. But I'm just thinking why? to myself, um, why? Um, well, it's a, I suppose everything has a story, you know. Um, basically, when I made the decision to pursue education, I was in UCD to get my degree, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that year with Longford, that good year, the year where we beat Kerry and we're in Division One National League, that was my probably my best year, even though I got injured in the middle of it, but I, I still had a good season. Uh, that was my final year in college. That was I was doing my finals that year as well, you know? 
And I had always intended after my finals to go traveling. Like I, I never, my intention was never to be a long for player. It's like Joe Mulvihill rang me randomly, you know, in the middle of January, I was playing rugby with UCD. You know what I mean? I didn't really, hadn't really intended to play for long. I definitely yeah. hadn't intended to get to an under 21 Leinster final. I had no idea Dennis Connington was going to call me in to the seniors. And then I trained hard that season. Like, if you ask any of the lads, I... I used to hear stories about it, yeah. Yeah, like, we had some base. We had, like, Leddy, end of lead with. Like, these boys were serious. We trained hard. End of some athlete for his... uh, Yeah, we trained hard. Up in Dublin, you had end of lead with. You had Niall Sheridan. Paul Barden, all we're all in the gym, a great group of lads. <laughs> and you train with those lads you knew about. Oh yeah, that was it. And then but I had always planned um to I had always planned to um go traveling, you know? So I suppose that was uh, yeah, that, that was in yeah. that was in your mind like kind of even as you were playing, you never saw yourself you never saw yourself 10 years down the line still wearing well, yeah, I, I, You always think your career is going to go on until you're about 33, 34. You think oh, were, you thinking, were you thinking that way at the time? Yeah, I was, I wasn't really thinking. I was thinking I'm going off. I need to go and do some exploring. You know what yeah. I mean? I, yeah, I was kind of, I was still fit enough. Sure, I was only 21, 22, you know? Yeah, uh, it was like it, it's, it's gas. And then because... I came back. I came back from traveling, but I was in no shape at all. And I went in, um, I, I kind of came off the bench against Dublin and Croker for a while. Uh, didn't play very well. Yeah, I just wasn't fit. I wasn't there. You know what I mean? I wasn't at the level I should have been at. Well, I, think uh, what, I think what happens there is like, I've often seen with lads who travel or go away for a while. Oh, you can't. No, while, well, they're, can't. while they're away, the game is moving forward. And exactly. it's very, very hard to make that yeah. up. I have a new philosophy now at the end. For every year you take off, it's a year coming back. Yeah. So you take two years off, you won't be able to reach your max potential for another two years approximately. It takes you two, that long to get back to where you're supposed to be. Um, so that's, but that's all hindsight. Uh, so basically, yeah. And then, I, then we played Wexford in Wexford Park. And after the game, we lost against that. And again, I didn't play well. I was playing wing back and there was a guy, he was actually a good player, a big tall guy for Wexford playing wing forward. He was a very good player. I didn't play very well. I wasn't fit, to be honest with you. I just yeah. wasn't. After that trip, like that trip was, like I think I, I traveled from San Francisco to Buenos Aires, mostly by bus, like, you know what I mean? And it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. You know what I mean? I just, I wasn't, I wasn't in Cully Fad. <laughs> you know I'm not either. <laughs> and if you're not in Cully Fad, you're not you're not going to be at the races. So I wasn't at the races. And then after the game against Wexford, Declan Rowley and uh, Luke Dempsey were the managers at the time. It wasn't Dennis anymore. And um, I, they were talking about the following season. They were like, "Oh, we're going to be starting now." And and it was, and I'll tell you, it was at the time when things were getting near professional in Gaelic football like yeah. you know he was like we're going to be out in I don't know he might have said January or he might have even said December or November and we're going to start with 5k's and then we're going to go up to 10 and I just put up my hand and said sorry no can't do it not yeah. doing it I can't and I said it in the dressing room um, I don't know if lads were annoyed at me or whatever but I, I did I said it out and it was right after we were knocked out of Championship, like in, <laughs> in the dressing room. Um, I yeah, I it was really. Up and received too well now. Back at the time. Uh, yeah, I think the lads probably were pissed off by. by it was a different uh, era, though. It was different views. I got, got on and I got on against Dublin, and but I got taken off again against Dublin and Croke Park, which was a bit mortifying. And then um, I got up, brought. I was starting against Wexford, and yeah, but like. I suppose lads that were stalwarts probably were a bit like, oh, who does he think he is? Whatever. But like, here's at least I said it straight out. I didn't leave them thinking that I was going. You know, you can do the snaky one there as well and say nothing. And then when they call you to come in the following season, and then they think you're going to be there. Yeah. They think you're going to be part of it. That, that was against Dublin. You said you were brought on, taken off. 
Yeah, in who, Croke Park. Who was manager that time? Um, Luke Dempsey, I think, and Declan Rowley. Yeah, I think. Mm. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, brought on, taken off. Same has so, me. It's one. It's one of the worst things. I was mortified, and I shouldn't yeah. have been brought off, to be honest. And again, yeah. I was a bit sore about that, so that could have been part yeah, of the it's reason. Not, it's not, why a nice, not, I, not a nice experience, no. Not a not a nice experience no. in front of sixty thousand people. No. You know no. what I mean? Like it's all right in in Cully Fad, but <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> live TV or whatever, so it wasn't yeah. live. It was, it was, uh, uh, it was pretty, you know, on Sunday. And uh, obviously, I don't, think, I don't think that that even maybe I was a bit pissed off about that, but to be honest, I wasn't fit, so I can't. But at the same time, that's the way it goes. I it just it was getting professional. Like if I wanted to be a professional football player, I'd, I'd have played. Soccer I suppose you, you were rare, I suppose, at that time, you're supposed to be your way of thinking because I think actually what might have your underage experience and playing so many different codes and having that experience overseas would have definitely contributed to you having that longing to go away because you would kind of seen a bigger picture at that stage. Whereas a lot of lads would yeah. have came up playing Gaelic football right from day one, right up to when they started playing county and then it was almost like you're stuck in this county thing for the long haul like because yeah, there's a there's a pressure there's a pressure not, there not like from a, not coming from a gaelic background like yeah, not having yeah. not having anyone in my family that gives a damn about gaelic like yeah. nobody in my family cares about it, only me like you know what i mean yeah, and if, so, you were to, and if you were to go home and say i'm thinking of going to america for the summer there was nobody well, they were like go yeah. What's, what's, what's stopping you? you there's know no one I mean? saying, oh God, that's a disgrace. You no, can't. there's no expectations. Yeah. There's, you know, um, but at the same time, like you're always coming back playing for Graner, coming back unfit, yeah. coming back. You know, <laughs> at one point, I think, oh, but then I went traveling to um, Canada. I moved to Canada for a year after that. Um, and I dislocated my left shoulder in Canada, uh, snowboarding. So, and that just caused me problems then for, I just couldn't get it fixed. I didn't get it fixed. I thought, ah, it's grand, it's grand. Just kept going out and kept putting it back in myself. And, you know, so I played a couple, and I tried to play for Granard after that, but it didn't, you know, I was living in Galway when I came back for five years as well. It just wasn't easy to get back, you know? And then I finally really came back when I was 29. For the yeah the that was the intermediate final picture there you have up yeah yeah so I came back when I was about twenty nine or thirty and I, I played two thousand twelve wasn't it two thousand and twelve and I gave about another four or five and I, and they were good years like they were enjoyable we were playing we got out of straight out of intermediate championship back to senior championship we got back to senior league they were when I came back Granard were down in we were down in um, Oh, geez, it was bad state of affairs the, just before that, that year. When I came back, now I was in an awful state. Um, I wasn't fit at all. Um, but we, we didn't have a whole lot of players at that first training session. I remember it was tough. And we got a very good manager, Jerry Cadden is his name. And he galvanized the team. And we somehow managed to get to that intermediate final jesus the quarter final was oh man i think it was abandoned or in 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 um, <laughs> the match was abandoned in newtown in clungish because of what it got waterlogged we they, the other team had scored two goals in the first i think it was it was might have been rack klein had scored two goals in like the first five minutes and we were almost going out and the match was abandoned because the pitch was waterlogged and then we came back and we got a draw against them in the next game and then that got us into the quarters, semis, and then yeah. So yeah. we went back up then to senior, you know, and that that was good. Yeah, no, like really? it's well, you know, like you look at your Lanfer career, and you played for from two thousand two to two thousand five, and then you just have that memorable moment from the Kerry game, you know, like that is something you'll probably never forget, and people in Lanfer never forget. Like it's it's kind of especially when you're when you're playing in a county that we don't see. Leinster final glory days too often. We don't see All Ireland final glory days. We don't see All Ireland semi quarter final glory days. But you know, and as as regular as, as other counties would, that we kind of live for 
the moments in games. We live for the one-off victories. You know, we kind of... Yeah. And, and oftentimes, yeah. it's been often used over the years of, you know, these, uh, you know, they, they're kind of been uh, depreciated a bit, you know, like n- knocking, knocking a big team off the perch on, on, uh, on, you know, on the odd day in, in a championship, you know, where it was least expected off you, being the underdogs. Like, it's... I, I don't agree with it. I think like they're like that's all you have to cling on to at the end of the day is when you meet your old teammates or your old friends, they're the moments you talk about. You know, you don't want yeah. to be you don't want to be dwelling on this thing, oh look, if you don't win a Leinster, you're no addition. But like that day, like that flipping day, good lord, like it looks like everybody's like, Oh, glory, glory, yeah, man, the rain and the wind. Yeah. It was a dog of a day. Now to me, that's like gold. Like yeah. I love the rain. Like I give me more of it and wind. I love it. Like I because I'm a rugby player, I love just Love that, like dirty ball. That at the time when I was under twenty, I was very hard in on on breaks. I'd been well schooled on breaks in Mel's by Rowley, Declan Rowley, and I was very good at getting in and dirty ball. Like I was on Galvin that day, you know. Um, and like I haven't seen the game back. I've never seen the game, but I'd like to see it. I'd like to. I'd love to see the. the sure, dirty it's ball. somewhere. Yeah, there must be a video of it somewhere, but I'd like to see the the dirty ball that day because it was there was a lot of it it was dirty day man it was perfect like it was blugger all glory in it to be honest it yeah. was one of those days oh i'll never forget the nerves before it oh but God. like there's there's that's just something special about those games you know when there's big opposition coming to town and you're you're just buzzing you're like if we're ever going to beat them yeah it's going to be in pierce park and it's going to be on a day like this yeah and, and it's, it's kind of it's games like that that kept the tradition going and, and built on the tradition of like you know Pierce Park, Glenbury's Pierce Park being oh, yeah. you know, being a fortress like because you definitely oh, yeah. do get something. You know, pity you, about the stand actually is the stand open now again? Oh yeah, it's it's, it's up and running again. Yeah, yeah that's but, um, yeah because Pierce Park when it's full house is class. Yeah, like you know it definitely gives it's you. No a, better. I I'm sorry. That's one of my regrets. Well, I don't know if it is a regret. I would have liked to play more for the county, you know, um, more years. Because when you look back at the, the, you know, when you when I went, I used to go to watch some of the county games, you know, and you'd see the place, you know, first or second round of the championship, and you'd see full house, and you'd be like, oh, I'd love to just now. And yeah. you talk, you talk a great game from the stands. You're like, oh, if I was out there, I'd do this, I'd do that. But you're not out there, you mm. know, and and you know it's. Um, you know, those, those I, I always like the crowd, you know, it's always, it's a really strange sensation kind of having a ball in your hands and hearing energy behind you, like hearing yeah. this noise. Yeah. And it's like, I think you have to remind yourself, it's like going to watch a championship game and wanting to be out there, but you kind of have to just say, okay, you have to look back on what it takes to get to that point. And that's, oh, yeah. that's, where, you, that's where you rewind to <laughs> the likes of Cully Fad. And then you'll mm. be able to answer, ah, well, maybe I'm happy enough. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm totally happy, man. Like that day in, in Longford, like in that game, there were about, I don't know how many people were at that. Maybe, maybe a couple of thousand. Everybody yeah. says they were at the game. Everyone says they saw the goal, but <laughs> oh, sure, I don't that, remember that being that many people, you know. I, I think that's, that's what's so important that like you leave people with a memory that they can always talk about, you know. And I, was at, I was on my stag down in Mayo, in Castle Bar. And some fella, I didn't, I couldn't, wasn't really sure who he was. And he just looked at me and I was on my own stag. I was absolutely locked. And he just looked at me and he wasn't on my stag. Like he, was, he wasn't from my, my party. And he goes, I was there. I was like, where were you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I was locked. I was like, where were you? And he goes, when you scored the goal. And I was just like, oh my God, will people never forget that goal? Like, just follow me around the country. Like, that's nice though. That is, it is. Yeah. Though. It's, it's very cool. Yeah. Uh, good yeah. times, good times. Right, Lynch, we'll finish up just two land spot questions. Right. First one, um, your most influence, influential manager. Influential manager? Hmm. Uh, do I have to, can I talk about a few and then maybe... Well, you can keep it to one, that'd be great. Keep it to one. 
Um, tough one. In Gaelic. Any code? Any code. I'd say my dad, uh, Longford Rugby Club. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's where I learned how to be tough. <laughs> very good very good yeah you had to be tough to play rugby with my elbow yeah so that that was where you learn how to take a hit yeah, and give one and give one. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that was that was yeah anything above a blade of grass had to go down so <laughs> that was, yeah i think rugby is a beautiful sport to be honest i think yeah, it's it's got it's a lot really teaches if, if you ever had a, a a lad that has disciplinary problems and soccer or gaelic i would get them to play rugby for a season and that would sort them out pretty quick cool um second question uh is there anything you would tell a younger version of yourself different anything i would tell to do, to do younger, something different yeah so you're, if you were to talk to your, a younger version of yourself would you advise them to do anything differently um let me think about that now for one second I don't think I would change a thing, man. Um, I w oh, yeah, okay. If I was going to talk to my, a younger version of myself, um, I suppose the advice I would give would be, when, like, because we, when you get to a high level, it, a lot of it's to do with... I, I've discovered, really, that the game is okay, physicality and everything is one thing. Uh, I still believe that there's not enough training going on uh, for skills. I still don't think, like, I was out this morning for 45 minutes or an hour with a football on my own in a, in a five-a-side pitch, you know, just practicing my finishing, practicing my touch, like doing Ronaldinho, taking it down out of the sky, all that kind of stuff. That's just for fun, you know, and yeah. I, I just don't think lads are doing that enough. I think there, there's far too much, like the skills of the game, like there's so much you can do with that football. Like, you know, and I, I just don't see enough skill in Gaelic football. I see it far too, it's still a bit, bit archaic uh, in terms of originality and flair. And I still think there's that um, element of, oh, don't do anything fancy because mm. you, and you get scolded for it. I think that's ridiculous. If I was telling anybody, I'd be telling them, express yourself. Uh, be creative uh, do train differently to develop your own train and figure out your own body like don't be listening to lads you know who are telling you how to play the game figure the game out for yourself you know like they, they watch the old greats I, when I was playing rugby now and I was far far better at rugby than I was at soccer or Gaelic when I was going to play rugby I would be watching the Hong Kong Sevens videotapes the night before um before we went to blitzes and stuff and i'd be watching a guy called wasili zarevi i don't know if you know him oh, never heard. you watch a few videos of wasili zarevi and he was just this little fijian maestro of sevens rugby and i mean a maestro like and you if you whoever's watching this go watch some videos of zarevi and like he was just fearless and he was creative and he was, and people loved him, and they still love him. He's an absolute legend of the game. Yeah. And the reason being it was because of that fearlessness, that like creative energy that just doesn't care what people think. You know, I think a lot of sometimes in Gaelic football, I'm going to just stick to Gaelic. That 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 kind yeah. of gets coached out of you, and and it, more and more it's getting coached out that you're just. And I think that. The way lads are now, they're so physically conditioned, so well conditioned. But the ball skills, the, when the ball's on the ground, if you ever played hurling, you'll often hear about ground hurling. Ground hurling is when the ball is on the ground and it's your stick work on the ground. It's your ability to stop the ball, hit the ball on the ground. And I just think that the soccer element of Gaelic is, is kind of neglected a bit too much. And when I'm playing, you'll often see me do ridiculous stuff like I, and, and I, I know it drives, and I know it drives the people mad. <laughs> I know it does. I know when I do a Cruyff turn, I tried a back heel in the intermediate final against Cashel and Peter Foy nearly boxed me in the mouth after it. 
because Peter Foy comes up to me in Granard after the game. We beat them in the intermediate final by a point. I got the 45 to win that. And Foyzer came up to me after that. He came, fair play to him and Gary Kenny. They came out to Granard and Tommy D. They came out to Granard and uh, he goes, did you try a back heel in the first half of that game? <laughs> And I was like, yeah. And he goes, man, I could have punched you. In the mouth. <laughs> because I couldn't believe it. Basically, there was a 45 came in, right? And Fergus Kelly and someone else was on the edge of the square. And they both jumped up for it, right? And it bounced down. And I was on the line kind of distracting the keeper. And it bounced down on the, on the edge of the square. And I was moving out. And as I was moving out, I back heeled him. And I was rolling right into the bottom corner. And someone stuck out a leg and kicked it out for a 45. But like... That kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, nobody would do that. And I think that yeah, I know. when I think about playing football, I, I think about it being like a, a gladiator. You know, people are going there to see you. And, like, uh, and I always thought that give them value for money. Give them something they haven't seen. Do something, you know, unusual. Do something weird. But, you know, like, but... I just think that if I was, yeah, talking to my younger self, it would just be like, don't worry about the result. Mm. Don't even worry. Just work hard, hard, hard in that game. Just work as hard as you can and have fun. Yeah. And then after that, don't worry about a damn thing. And, and realize, I would tell them to, I would tell them to realize that it is important. It is important. Playing for Longford is important. Playing for Longford Town is important. Playing for Mel's is bloody important. You know what I mean? Like, it is important. These are the things that when you're finished, you look back and you're like, oh, my God. Like, imagine being on the Mel's team that won that All-Ireland. Like, you know, yeah. like, imagine being on the Mel's team that won the Leinster. We got the two Leinster finals. You know, there's a lot of imagines and what ifs and all this stuff. But at the same time, my teams were great. We had class teams, class players. We had brilliant moments. You know what I mean? And I just think, no fear. Be creative. Get your skills right. Like, be skillful. Don't be strong. Be skillful. Be the guy who can pick the pass. Do the thing. Like, you ever see, do you remember your man's, you know, he was a brilliant player. Do you remember the Kerry lad, the little O'Sullivan fella, the fast guy? Declan. Declan, do you remember he did the back heel into the goals in, yeah, Pierce, in, right, in Crow yeah. Park? Uh, he's such a talent, yeah. But he was a soccer player. You oh, know no, sorry, that's, that's Darren O'Sullivan. Yeah, Darren, Darren, yeah, yeah, Darren, Darren did it. Yeah, Darren did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now, Declan was a savage player as well. And yeah. Really, but Darren, when he does that kind of thing, and like, that's goal of the year. Yeah. That's goal of the year, you know, or when uh, Mulligan does the two dummies and then bang, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Those things, they're the moments, they're the skills that, that lads have been thinking about. You think he's doing that on the spot? Do you think he's going out and just trying that without practicing it? Like, no, no way. If I do something on a pitch, you see, and I, and Granard boys will tell you, like, I do a lot of, like, funny stuff, like Cruyff turns and nutmegs and the whole <laughs> lot. But sure, I'm practicing that. I was out this morning with a ball, practicing drop kicks, practicing taking the ball down. Like, you know, like none of that is, that's, that's all pre-rehearsed. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. none of that. That's, that's just, you're going out there doing it. You're, you're working on it. You're, 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 you're spending hours on your own with a ball, imagining you're in Piers Park, you know, thinking, Oh, if the keeper comes off his line. Now he thinks I'm going to bury it by him. Now I'm going to take it by him. You know what I mean? Like, that you, you before you take a panel, you know you're going top left two days before, like you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I know. So important. So yeah, important. I, I just yeah, think that that that's the advice I would give. Um, Great. Work hard and um, play without fear, and then you and and and, ex, and express yourself and be creative. Be do change the game. Yeah. You know what I mean. Change the way people think of the game. When Darren O'Sullivan did that goal, everyone was like, "Oh." Wow. Yeah. Never seen well, it has to come from the top too. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. You know, it has yeah. to come from the top. Exactly. So, yeah. but, but, that's it. but it, that's what I would say. Um, 
Cool. But yeah, I hope I hope it goes well for you now, Sean. So Cheers. Yeah. Thanks a million, Steve. Now, honestly, oh, I, re- no, I really no, appreciate no, the time no, you no, guys. No, great no, chat. No, great no, chat. Been a bit of crack, you know. Heard lots about you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, but see how it goes. It's always uh, good to get a different insight and. Uh, Everybody's yeah, different back. I'll, I'll, I'll be listening out now. And you know what? I'll be looking forward to hearing what young lads, the, the young lads that you get in, like, and, and I hope lads do go in so you can get some really good conversations with, with older players, younger players. And yeah, like Longford football, there's still, there's loads left in the tank, you know? Like there's, if when Mel starts firing and, and the colleges and all the, you know, Granard Tech, Granard Convent, all those schools, Ballymahan Convent, a great they're serious. Now, yeah, Ballymahan yeah, yeah, Tech, Ballymahan Convent, like, there's serious football in these colleges, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and, and that, when, when we get a couple of those colleges all firing at the one time, that's when you get good Longford teams and Moyne as well. You know what I mean? Like, that's when yeah. you get the, the good Longford teams. If you look at the good Longford teams now, they're all coming through the colleges. You, you're getting, you're getting, we had a couple of great years there with Granard, uh, Convent, and Mel's. You know, when Mel's are firing, yeah. Convent are firing, get those young fellas. Like, it just takes one group and one day to beat the likes of Dublin Definitely. in Longford on yeah. a dirty day, you know. Um, but it is possible. You know, you have to believe. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. You know? So, Stephen, you're a gen. Thanks so much. No worries. Sean, good luck and... Uh, Hello to everybody. And I'm going to Pleasure talking to you, bud. Pleasure talking All to right, you. All right, man. Take care, dude. Take it easy. Good luck. Bye-bye.